Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this terrific, terrific Tuesday. And that's it, baby. It's still Tuesday and this is video three of three. That's it. I thought I'd treat you. Now, the, the thing what will go wrong is if I can't edit this in time and tomorrow's video one has that opener because then that's going to be, look, I'm going to look stupid, isn't I? I'm, not, I'm going to look stupid. Whereas you, you guys look amazing. I look like an idiot. But anyway, I'm getting my notes up because I need them. What are we talking about? We're talking about snitches. We're talking about snitches. Snitches get stitches. And we have been talking about this airmail, Howard Bloom and this aim, this airmail story. And look, some people are non-trustworthy of it, and I get it, I get why, because Howard Bloom is a fiction writer, and he, he is an investigative journalist, and, you know, people have said, he's just writing whatever he wants to sell and get this, and, and there is always, there's always a possibility of that. There's always a possibility of embellishments, of twists and things, but... I think in the Idaho 4 case, and when we listen to a lot of the things in there, a lot of the things make sense. A lot of the things do make sense, and I believe that the vast majority of what is written in there is factual. Yes, there are some elements to it that are not accurate in the sense of, I believe there was a situation where he was talking about the phones, people having the phones and getting the information off the phones, and you know the intricacies of that. But the general feeling of it is that it's accurate. And one of the parts that they talk about is the fact that Steve Gonsalves, he was doing his own investigation. He didn't trust law enforcement. So he went out and he started doing his own investigation. He's got private investigators involved. He had a contact within the FBI that was feeding him information, even from the grand jury, which is very, very grey and shady stony ground to be on and is there going to be repercussions to that who knows hopefully that's a piece of information that came out of that doc that isn't accurate because if that is accurate i have a feeling that that could later on play into a problem but one of the other things they talk about is the fact that he had found someone who basically was a snitch basically was a snitch someone who snitched and he was going to have a conversation with this person, but then the FBI intervened. Intervened, said, no, no, Mr. Gonsalves, you're not talking to him. And if we're, and I'm going to paraphrase it and put it into layman's terms. And they basically said to him, we don't care if you're Kaylee's dad. You don't fucking talk to our witness. It's all right for us to, by the way, when we want to go and intimidate the um, defence's witnesses will do that because we're the FBI and we can do what we want. But you are not going to be talking to state witnesses or you will feel the full wrath of the law regardless of who you are and what you've been through. So stay away, you've been told, naughty man. And that's basically what they said. So it raised a lot of questions as to who could this have potentially been? Who, who could it be? Could it? And the reality is it could be anybody. It could be anybody. But then you think to yourself, could it have been anybody? Because if it's someone who's snitching to the point where they believe it was Brian Koberger or they have information about Brian Koberger, because you'd think if there was other information out there to the point where this was an FBI informant, say, then there'd be another arrest, wouldn't there? You'd think there'd be another arrest by now if they knew it was somebody else. So what we're ascertaining here is whether this is someone who knows that Brian did the crime. But then you've got to think to yourself, so how do you know that Brian did the crime? I come up with all these questions because I think to myself, in order to be a grass, you've got to know something. And you think, well, how did you know something then? How do you know what you know? Was it someone who directly had communication with Brian Koberger and Brian Koberger told them that he did it? Or was it someone who was part of a bigger picture? They were involved, but to save their own neck, they dropped Brian Koberger in on it to give them immunity from something else. And who does that make you think of? That makes you think of Demetrius Robinson because the airmail documentation states him 
Now, that could have been purposefully placed in there to throw people off the scent, put him when in fact it was female. They could have not made any reference to him or her and just simply put they, which would have made more sense. And that's why I feel that this is genuinely a him rather than a ruse to throw people off. But then I think to myself, even as I'm saying, I think, but then even if they put they, would that have thrown you off as much as if they'd have put him? Don't know. Could have been a clever ploy and it could have been a female. If it was female, who would that be? Now, we've obviously got the Asian female who seemingly frequented Brian Koberger's vicinity. They had a relationship together. And in fact, it was actually JB Gunner, fucker, who had pointed out quite rightly that it would seem that her name was in the PCA. A lot of people just overlooked it, but she was actually mentioned within the official court documentation. Could it have been her? And they want to protect her by saying him. Who knows? But anyway, I digress. Point being, the only him that makes sense, if it is genuinely a him, would be Demetrius Robinson. And what would Demetrius Robinson have to get out of it? And then we look back to the fact that Demetrius Robinson and Emma Bailey were involved in the supply of a narcotic that would result in the death of a young man. Um, and, and, and look, they basically got off. They, they basically walked. Emma and Demetrius walked. And the conclusion was that they they got off, and this doesn't make sense, but tell me if this makes sense. As it says, the Lewis County Prosecutor's Office has forwarded the case against two people allegedly connected to a March overdose death to the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, the Centralia Police Department, said in a news release on Wednesday. The King County Prosecutor's Office will make its own independent charging decision for the case. Um, so basically, yeah, they they held them, and then they just they, after doing all of the investigative work to find, to ascertain that these are indeed the people involved. They did it. There's there's no doubt. There's this no, this narcotics enforcement team, um, and they decided that they would dismiss the charges against them because they decided that the charges needed to be made in somewhere that they didn't have jurisdiction. So they handed it over to someone else and let them off. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get it. It says the specific reasons for asking the cases to be dismissed were not clarified in the public court documents. However, the Centralia Police Department stated Wednesday the dismissals were due to a determination made during the investigation that King County was the appropriate venue for prosecution. So please, someone, let me know down below whether you can find, because I cannot, it might just be because I'm not great or my VPN doesn't work to give me what I need, but I can't find anything. And I found the, the PDF document that shows you all of this county's, King County's, in infill if you like for their their prison system and it was <laughs> it was over a thousand pages so i won't go through it and i couldn't search names so i it would have i would have had to have gone through it line by line so i can't find it i can't find anything that's publicly stated that emma and demetrius are being charged with this crime in king county can you that's your challenge for the day let me know because i would still I would still say that Demetrius and Emma, if what we've seen is true and that they have had dealings around 1122 King Road and they knew or they were part of the peripheral and they have managed to walk scot-free, Demetrius especially, based on his past, if he's walked free from this, then I'd say he's a snitch. I'd say he's a snitch. And what crime around this situation is a crime that if he snitched on or was willing to say that he knew something, yeah, this is a. Would it have been him? Let me know down below. Is there a snitch? If there's a snitch, who's the snitch? I'll catch you all tomorrow. <laughs>